University's calendar. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the International Language Center for the 2000-2001 academic year. We hope this year will be a year of success for you. Now, let me give you a quick rundown of our calendar for the first quarter. The orientation for new students will be held next Thursday, August 31st. September 4th will be our holiday. That is Labor Day, so there will be no school on that day. The first day of class will be on Tuesday, September 5th. About one month later, there will come another holiday, Thanksgiving Day. That's October 9th. There is no school on that Monday. November 9th will be our last day of class. That's Thursday. The following day will be exam day. Please remember that's November 10th and be prepared for the examination. I'd like to tell you that regular attendance at this school is necessary in all classes and lectures. We expect at least 90% attendance. Attendance is taken by each subject teacher. You know you cannot succeed in school if attendance is irregular. Absences of 20% or more will result in students being placed on probation for one quarter. Continued absences may result in the student being required to withdraw from the school. It's our expectation you will all grow to realize your full potential and contribute your talents to this year's activities. Exercise 2. About the coursework. Hello everyone. Before you start your course, we would like to tell you a little about the background of how the course is designed. You will have an opportunity to discuss the emphasis you would like the course to have in the first two units. We are confident you will benefit from the course if you can agree on what is important to do and how you would like it to be done. The emphasis of this course is on observing how native speakers use English, describing how the language is used, discussing difficulties, and practicing the language as it is really used. Much of the material, particularly in the second part of each unit, may seem simple, from a structural and vocabulary point of view, that is. The emphasis, however, is not on knowing nor even understanding such language, but on being able to use it yourself. This course is not for those who want to know something about English, but for those who wish to use it effectively as a means of spoken communication. The following assumptions are made throughout the course. 1. It is possible to study the spoken language, and this is in no way inferior to the written language. 2. Some students find grammar rules helpful, others do not. But nobody finds rules helpful which are full of exceptions. 3. It helps to learn more words, but it often helps more to learn to use those you already know more effectively. 4. At your level, discussing the language and how it is used is an essential element in learning. 5. It helps to use authentic materials. This course is not for those who want to know, but for those who want to use the language. The most important objective of the course is to help you to be yourself in English. Exercise 3 being involved in campus life. Good morning and welcome to our regular lecture 
on being a confident student. This series of lectures is organized by the Students' Union, and we want to help you to cope well with the life on campus. Today, it's a great pleasure for me to welcome Ms. Diana Sheeran, who is the president of the Students' Union, and she has been kind enough to give up her time to come along and talk to us. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. May I say it's a pleasure to be here. Now, I know being away from home and having to look after yourselves can make you feel homesick and give you a hard time. So today, I'm going to talk about the ways of making sure that you get involved in campus life. This may help you cope better with your study and life on campus. To become more involved in campus life, use your college's resources, which include places to go for help, people who can help you, and publications that can help you. Your instructors, academic advisors, counselors, department heads, resident advisors, coaches, and club sponsors are among the people you can ask for help. Become familiar with the services your college provides and know where to get them. The Registrar's Office answers all questions about records and grades. The Career Center can help assess your interests and skills. The Guidance Office offers help with course selection and scheduling and may offer personal counseling as well. Learning labs and libraries provide equipment and learning resources to help you improve your skills and meet course requirements. The Financial Aid Office handles questions about fee payment, scholarships, loans, grants, and jobs available on campus. If you need more instruction than you are getting in the classroom, your college may provide a tutor. Exercise 4. The First Year Undergraduates Two students are talking in the student's canteen. Is this seat taken? No. May I sit here? Please do. Are you a new student? Yes, I'm Marty from Korea. I got here only yesterday. I'm Alan. Uh, second year in law. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Alan, could you tell me something about the first-year student's life here? Okay. You know, the first-year student's life can be exciting but terrifying for the first week. Why is it terrifying? Oh, many first-year students will feel very homesick for the first week since this is their first time away from home. By the way, do you live on campus? Yes, I live in a hall of residence. That's good. Living in a hall of residence soon helps you to make some new friends. You know, the university always provides accommodation to the first-year students. They may move out into a rented room in their second or third year, or share a house with friends. I see. That's reasonable for the first-year students so they don't worry about their accommodation and transportation problems. That's right. During the first week, all the clubs and societies will hold a student's fair, during which they try to persuade new students to join their society. Oh, I heard about that. I expected this kind of fair. I'd like to join some sports clubs so I will have something to do in my spare time. The first-year students are told that it is important for them to come into contact with many opinions and activities during their time at university. The first week, you may be taken to visit the campus. You can see groups of students walking around the huge campus, finding their way around in the first week of university. And at weekends, the university may organize some trips to places nearby, so you will be quite busy for the first few weeks. It sounds good. All the activities will keep me busy. Thank you, Alan. You're welcome.
and hope you will enjoy your stay here. Exercise 5. Be a successful student. Today, I'd like to talk about how to be a successful student. First, you should discover who you are and what you want to be. We all have our own personalities, qualities, character, and relationships. All those things together make us who we are. It's time to ask yourself, what kind of a person do you want to be? Shakespeare said, the world is a stage and we all play different roles. Well, what roles do you play? A student or a teacher? Musician or doctor? Write your roles down. For each role, what are your responsibilities? Then ask yourself, what would you want to do? And what would your future look like? How do people get what they want? How can you make your dreams come true? One thing to do is to set a goal and make a plan to achieve your goals. We all know that good things don't happen overnight. But you have to be prepared. You might just have to work hard to make it happen. Remember, you need to make a plan for your goals. Write down your short-term goals and break them into weekly goals so you know exactly what you need to do each week. You will be surprised how helpful this can be. Some projects are small and can be completed in a day. But then there are big projects like essays, reports, personal goals, difficult things that require planning, time, and effort. So you can plan personal and academic goals on the monthly and weekly planning pages of your list. Make it easy on yourself. Break down your projects or goals into small, easier steps and work towards them one step at a time. When you finish your plan, you should start to do it. Once you get going, it's much easier to continue. You can reward yourself with a treat. For example, some healthy snack or game for making progress on a project. You can work with a friend and encourage each other. You can design your own study schedule and stick to it. But be in control. Don't interrupt your study time for phone calls or TV shows. When you finish studying, you should review and check all completed tasks. Mark unfinished tasks with a future date and get ready to do it the next day. Now, let's just refresh our memories. First, to discover who you are and what you want to be. Then, plan to achieve your goals. And last, is to do it because you can. Exercise 6. Homestay Program Excuse me, could you tell me what the Homestay Program in the brochure is? The Homestay Program is designed to promote friendship and language learning. We try to provide the opportunity for cultural exchange between Canadians and international students who attend the university. Local people open their homes to students so that they may experience an exchange of friendship across cultures. Many friendships that last a lifetime have developed from these stays. I see. What kind of families do you choose for the hosts? All kinds of families participate in this homestay program. There are single people with or without children, as well as couples with or without children. Are they Canadians? Yes, of course. They are Canadians of many races and cultures. For example, they may be originally from Asian countries, so do not expect that your hosts will be Caucasian. But all hosts will speak English fluently. 
but some may have accents. Do the hosts know this program well? Yes. The homestay coordinator has visited each family and provides information on the program and explains the responsibilities of the host. They look for people who are kind and friendly and enjoy meeting students from other countries. They make sure the hosts understand that this program is not designed for their financial gain. It sounds good. If you are interested, you can apply for this program. Here is some more information to help you understand the program. What is it? You must be willing to communicate with the hosts to establish a good relationship with them. This communication will require honesty, patience, and effort, because cultural and language differences sometimes create misunderstandings and confusion. You must be willing to interact with the hosts. That's what I expect to do. Good. The hosts will be concerned about you and will want to do all they can to help you achieve success. They will encourage you to discuss your thoughts and feelings openly with the host family. If a problem arises that you cannot resolve in this way, the homestay coordinator is always available to help you. Thank you very much. I think I'd like to apply for the homestay program. That's good. You can go to the homestay office to fill in some forms. I hope your experience will be a positive one.